This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. From the jazz band Acoustic Alchemy, Greg Carmichael and Miles Gilderdale on this edition of Conversations. For nearly a quarter of a century, Acoustic Alchemy has been recording music. Their smooth jazz sound has brought them success in both the United States and England, not to mention several Grammy nominations along the way. Some of the albums you may know include Red Dust and Spanish Lace, Natural Elements, and Sounds of St. Lucia. From Acoustic Alchemy, we welcome Greg Carmichael and Miles Gilderdale to Conversations. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Yeah, good to be here. W welcome to the U.S. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you've been touring in England for a while, so now you're ready to head across the U.S. Before we get into that, take me back and give me the history of Acoustic Alchemy. I know you go back to the 1980s. Let me start with you, Greg. Yep, it's quite complicated, yeah. actually. How long um, have you gone? <laughs> <laughs> 30 it's, minutes. Um, <laughs> Acoustic Alchemy started um, in the early 80s, but with neither uh, myself nor, nor Miles. Its actual uh, original conception was uh, from a guy called uh, Nick Webb, and who played steel string guitar, and a nylon string guitarist uh, called Simon James. They were at college studying music, um, and they wanted, both obviously guitarists, and they wanted to um, do something that combined the sound of the steel string guitar and the nylon string guitar, because they thought it was quite a unique combination. Um, sadly, uh, at that time uh, in England, uh, you know, the record companies weren't really interested in uh, acoustic guitar music. Right. I mean, you know, you, t you take along a demo to a record company and first of all, it was, you know, why aren't you singing? Where, where, where's the song? Right. Uh, because it was all instrumental. Right. So um, Simon, the nylon string player, became quite despondent and he decided that he would, he didn't think this was going to work, so he, he left and pursued a sort of solo classical guitar career. But um, Nick Webb, um, to his credit, he, he still really liked the idea of this. He thought it was a very interesting idea. And uh, so he was on the lookout for um, another nylon string guitar player to replace Simon. And I, 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 I'd been, I was playing nylon string guitar in, in some bands in London, because that's, that's where we were based, in, in London. And he saw me one evening <coughs> and approached me afterwards and said, I've got this idea, would you be interested? And I said, oh, yeah, it sounds, sounds, pretty, it sounds pretty interesting. Who, who's in the band? Yeah. They said, well, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'd, I'd, I went around to his apartment, because uh, he lived in central London, and um, listened to some of the stuff they'd been doing. And I thought it was, I thought it was, was interesting. Mm -hmm. So I decided to quit the band I was in and, and uh, you know, get into bed, so to speak, with, uh, with Nick. Did you and Nick do the Virgin Atlantic? That's how we came to America. Tell me the story. Well, like I said, you know, the England didn't want to, would, weren't interested at all. Um, and so we didn't really know, we didn't really know quite what to do. Um, uh, we were playing the music we've been right, you know, um, composing. Uh, in, in just in pubs and in wine bars, just just in London, we were just doing li little gigs. Right. And uh, one uh, evening, um, th th one of the other guys in the band, uh, play, uh, upright bass player, came in with a, the Evening Standard, which was um, <coughs> a London evening newspaper. Right, right. And he said, "Hey guys, have you seen this?" And there was a bo there was a box ad in the back saying, uh, "In flight, entertainment required for Virgin Airlines." Jugglers and fire eaters need not apply. <laughs> so it was quite it was, it was quite an interesting one. And the deal, what what they wanted was Richard Branson was just starting up Virgin Airlines, right. and he wanted something a little different to entertain, you know, the passengers. So that I, I guess they was thinking, oh, let's let's fly Virgin because it sounds like a cool thing to do. Right. And so what what we had to do was we had to walk up and down down the aisle, which is pretty narrow anyway. Right. Um, one, you know. 
one guitar in front, one guitar behind, um, playing at you know thirty thousand feet with the turbulence going, and it was it was tricky, <laughs> I'm sure. and uh, entertain the the passengers, and so. We, we would be playing just after dinner uh -huh. and just before the film started because uh -huh. in those days it was just like one screen at the front you know? right <laughs> so right. Not, people didn't have their individual screens <laughs> and uh, we were the entertainment and in return for doing that uh, we got a free return flight to New York okay so that kind of presented the opportunity of taking our demo tapes to to America I mean we hadn't sort of thought about this beforehand but we thought well we might as well give it a go sure because nothing's happening in England let's yeah. let's see did Branson have Virgin Records at that time as well? Yes, he would have done. Yeah, because in fact that started first, didn't it? I, I, I believe yeah, it did. that's that. That was first, and then he launched into the, the brand more yeah, globally. Yeah. 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 When you use the word steel and nylon strings, for those who don't know and understand the difference, explain the difference and 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 what we're talking about. And you play steel, for example. Yeah. Well, the steel string guitar has evolved more as a folk instrument really. Um, the nylon string is the classical, to many people they think it was the superior instrument. Well, I might, the, the sort of Spanish background. I would have to say it's it? the original. Well, <laughs> we'll talk about that one later, won't we? <laughs> Again. And so they, they've evolved quite separately for quite a long time. I mean long before nylon was invented it was gut strings, just yeah. like just as all string instruments used to be gut. Um, but they are, the, the sort of evolution of the two has been quite separate and so you have the, the sort of on one side you have Spanish and classical music which is that evolution and on, on the other side it's folk and blues yeah. and pop okay. really. And they do have very, to say that <coughs> um, essentially they, they, they look very similar, the same principles of operating, tuned the same, but they do have quite a different sound and a very different approach to them as well. Quite as as much different as a piano and an organ might be, or a piano and a harpsichord. They're both the notes are in the same places, but they do different things. Different techniques. The, the co yeah, the combination of the two. The nice thing is that the they complement each other so well because <coughs> the the sounds, the 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 tonality of the instrument is in quite a different place. Uh -huh. um, the the Greg's guitars are very rich, round mids. It's lo lots of warmth in there. And uh, my guitar's got lots of bottom and lots of top, mm -hmm. so there's lots of oomph and lots of spangliness as well. Yeah. And the, the steel string really was, was sort of the forerunner of the electric guitar, wasn't it? Really? Indeed. Cause they, yeah. Because they decided to put, because they right. could, they could put a magnetic pickup on it. Exactly. And, uh, and, and bingo, so rock and roll. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So when you mix them together, how would you describe that sound? <laughs> it's acoustic alchemy. <laughs> Ta -da. It's one of those things that's actually it's it's greater than the sum of the parts. It's one of those chemistries, isn't it? It is. That together they make a big sound um, for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it's it's not a loud sound. You know, you're still re relying on strings vibrating over a little four-inch box here. Right, right. But it's a very very full and rich sound, right. and. Nick was absolutely right. Yeah, they do work very well together. Rather, and, and for yeah. some reason, it was always grouped, wasn't it? Before that, you, you'd either get Spanish guitars together or you get steel guitars together. Yeah, but people really haven't sort of ever put in, put in yeah, the exactly. two together. Yeah, so that's yeah. That's true. What do you think it was that made him start thinking this would be a good idea? Because it was he was, was he was cutting edge, right? At the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know I, either. I was just curious what his inspiration <laughs> no, was. I mean, he just you know. I he, guess he just. I guess he met Simon and you know they played together and just like and thought this is a good combination. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking outside the box basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because, because you, I, I guess because you can separate the sounds you know yeah. when when one of them is playing you know the accompaniment and the other is playing the melody right. and then they swap around you can actually separate exactly whereas I suppose if you had two steels right. it, it would be harder to you know to, to do To final. know where one starts and the other end. Yeah. Give me an example, and I, I don't want to get you know necessarily for those who aren't musicians too deep into it. But you say you, you play different, you, you do different things. What might you do with a steel string that he would not do with nylon string? Well, largely you you tend to play steel string with a pick, okay. um, which you never do with 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 a, a nylon. Nylon's all to do with the nails, and, to, and that gives you the the attack of the sound. The vibrato is a very big different thing. You know, the vibrato on the steel is 
um, you do a, a side to side waggle mm -hmm. and uh, and it, on a nylon it's it's a classical vibrato which you, you do on a, a violin which is a, this sort of thing right. it's a tremolo sort of thing um, bends as well you, you don't get much out of a bend on on, on, on a yeah. on a nylon it's not as rewarding as a, a bended string on a on they're a so string. they're so different the technique of playing them yeah. you know that the, they really are. I mean, I wouldn't dare play a steel string guitar on stage. I might just strum it at home. Okay. Even though I started on a steel string I, and finish up and on, I wouldn't because it, it is so different. So, so it's that different. That's that, yeah. That, that you would be. You oh no, I wouldn't. Public. I wouldn't certainly on stage. Wow. I'd feel like an amateur. I'd feel like really? yeah. No. Wow. How about you? Would you play the nylon on stage? Uh, no, I'd be the same. I, uh, I could strum a few chords, yeah. um, but again, uh, it would really sound like. That's interesting. Yeah, no, I, I, it would sound like what it was, me basically <laughs> bumming around. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it would sound like me picking a couple of chords probably. Would, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Yeah, quite different. Yeah. When you said you started on steel, what made you make the transition over into the nylon? Um, well, <laughs> simply because I was, I was playing steel actually up until I was um, about 16, 17. And <laughs> it was only then because the crunch time came where, you know, it's, you know, you, you're in, in school and the careers master comes in and he says, you know, and what are you going to do for a job? <laughs> yeah. And you say, I'd like to be a musician. And they, they look down and list. <laughs> that, that's not on my list. <laughs> At my right. school, it was a li the list was about this big. It was either go into banking or join the forces. <laughs> that, that was it. Yeah. I mean, that, was, say, one yeah. that <laughs> was one of the things that they suggested, to be a musician, join the forces, because it was a steady job. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so you could be in a military band. That's what they exactly. said to me, yeah. But, um, no, so the other option uh, was to, to study. Mm -hmm. And the only... Uh, you know the only colleges there in, in London, the colleges of music, it was all classical guitar. Okay. So in the last year at school, I just uh, I actually s quit doing my the exams. I'd kind of got halfway to and spent the whole of that year changing technique from okay. steel string to the nylon string technique, okay. and it took me it took me a year, but I managed to then get into music college. Interesting. Yeah. M Miles, what's your story? Well. I had a, a musical training. My, my folks bought me a guitar. They decided I was the musical one of the three brothers and said, he's musical, let's get him a guitar. So they got me a guitar when I was eight or nine, um, which I strummed a few chords on. Um, but um, I lived in a small town and, and there, wasn't, there wasn't anyone to play with or anything. And when I went to secondary school, high school, um, I took up the trumpet. Mm -hmm. Um, because you could have lessons in that. So I did some trumpet, then took, went on to French horn. And so I was getting proper lessons doing these things. And I couldn't get proper lessons on guitar. So all the time I was having a formal music training, I was sort of gradually teaching myself more and more on the guitar at home. Um, and so the sort of two things went parallel, really. Um, I went through s school and then went to college on horn. Um, did a degree, and, but all the time I was teaching myself guitar, listening to Santana and George Benson yeah. and that sort of thing. So actually I've got a hideous technique. I've spent the last 20 years trying to undo all the <laughs> terrible bad habits I got into really, yeah. just from teaching myself. Yeah. You guys have been in the music industry for a long time. What's the biggest change that you've seen over the past 20 or 30 years in the industry just across the board? The technology, I yeah. guess. <coughs> The, the availability of what you do. I mean, you, you only have to do one thing and suddenly it's, it can be everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's the biggest. I mean, the, I should never forget the, when, we first came, when we first did that Virgin Atlantic thing, came to America, took our demo tapes, and we went to Nashville because um, I had a friend there and he had a floor that we could sleep on. I should never forget the excitement of going up and down Music Row, you know, knocking on the doors. Yeah, we got the tape and they... Wow. And getting a record deal, I d it was just that first record that you've got. Suddenly, you've got a record deal. It's so exciting. Yeah. Um, but it's all—it's kind of all changed now. I mean, d and to be honest, um, sort of slightly, not str was slightly struggled to keep up with it because mm -hmm. it's changed it's changed so quickly. You know, it's gone from CDs to downloads to to all sorts of ways that you can access music now, mm -hmm. and keeping tabs on it is 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 quite hard. Is that for the artist? 
Okay, obviously for the consumer because it's cheaper and easy to access, but for the artist, is it good? D well, depends. I, yeah, it's, well, it's one of these glass half full, half empty things, I yeah, think. Yeah. I mean, in a, in, a, in a way, it's made, as we were telling you earlier, we're, we're going to do our first uh, solo, well, solo, self release with the next album. And uh, having had whatever, 16 or 17 albums out, with the record company, this is our first. We wouldn't have been able to do this 10 years ago mm. um, just because of the way the, the business works, distribution, advertising. But of course, with the, with the net, it's very, it's very different. Now, now we can advertise the fact that we've, we're, doing, we're having a release and people will know about it right. without having to spend millions and squillions just letting people know that the record's out there. Um, which is good, of course. Right. That's a positive thing. That's, That's a positive. Right. Th so there are equally many negatives. I mean, you could, we could get into the whole business of piracy, um, the almost uh, the glut of music that's out there, because everyone could put their music out there. Um, it means you're just wading through. How do you find the music that you want to hear, the quality or whatever? Just there's just so much. Where do you start? That was the one good thing about record companies that, that, that they would, in a sense, they would filter. They would, yes, that's what, right. What, what's out there, and say, okay, this is this is what you can have. All right, maybe you were looking for something different, which the record companies weren't supplying. Mm. There was always the indies, but right. at least there was that element of being able to filter uh, a degree of sort of quality and so forth, um, which I think you'd probably say generally is good. Um, but it's, I yeah, mean, it's I mean, it, it's complex. It, it is complex, and it's hugely complex. like you said, it is it is quite positive now. I mean, I suppose, you know, the fact that lots lots of music, lots of music can be out there by lots of people, and that that is a good thing. But it does make it harder for um, for, for us, right. if, if you like. Well, I would think. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I would think an established act like yourselves or, or someone else would probably have an advantage because you can produce your own stuff. You pretty much own everything. But I would think for the up and comer, it would be a real challenge. Yeah, right? hit the nail on the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think also <laughs> music is still very niche, isn't it? I mean, you'll get yeah. certain groups will listen to. I mean, certain demographics will listen to certain types of music, and you know. Right. Um, so, you know, I mean, yes, being an established act, but we, I, I, it would still be difficult to attract, you know, um, right. a new audience. A, a new audience. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Is, is radio airplay as important today as it used to be? It's hard to say because a, a lot of the radio stations that used to play us simply ain't there anymore. No, they're not, no. Yeah. Um, I mean, there used to be quite a network um, of stations playing our, our sort of thing, and one by one they've gone the way of the dodo. <laughs> yeah, and that was really, it was radio that really kind of established us in the States because, yeah. you know, that first record when it was released got played on the radio a lot and people really liked the sound of it. And so, they, they, so they would, the band, yeah, yeah. So they launched the band and so they would come to the shows. They come, yeah. to, they come to the first gigs because they heard it on the radio. Right. Now, of course, we've got internet stations, I mean, which um, are slowly taking over, but even as probably my age, I, I'm not in the habit of l turning the computer on to listen to radio right. yet. Right. I mean, I may, I may be, right. um, but um, I certainly get the feeling that they're fill, filling the void a little bit. Right, right. And of course, in, in the States, I don't know if it, this is the case in Europe, but we have the, the satellite radio, which can be a little bit more... Yeah. Yeah. Satellite's you know, been great I've to us, actually. It has got, it? Yeah. yeah. No, we've, be, we've, we've sort of ha yeah, we had don't a good relationship that. with those yeah. guys. No, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. only satellite in, in the U.S. because we don't have satellite in... In England, but right. we sort of had a good relationship with those guys from their sort of launch, and we're sort of good friends with them. Yeah, you have a new album coming out. Yeah, uh, tell me about it. It's called Roseland, um, and like Miles said, this is our first do-it-yourself record. Uh, Miles has built, as you say, Miles lives in York, and I li live in London, and Miles, where he lives, has built this fantastic studio really great little studio so um, it's given us the opportunity to <coughs> write w all the music and record it there mm. um, and uh, it's we've we've just we've finished it it's um, 
it's been mixed, it's been mastered, and it's uh, due for release uh, in the fall, September. Okay. In the fall of 2011. Yeah. Yeah. When you say write, when you guys sit down to write to compose, what's that like? Is it is it a inspiration type thing or is it very business like? Is it do you say you call and say, Greg, let's get together, we're gonna do some writing. Yeah. Is that the way it is or is it your own? Yeah, bus? I mean we do say that, don't we? We say this is an allotted time where we're going to get together, mm -hmm. sit down in the studio and, and and do some stuff. I mean, it's writing is it, what tends to happen is that Miles would come up with an idea, yeah. I would come up with an idea. We sort of had the inspiration first, haven't we? Yeah. So, so what we do is we throw ideas in the pot. We've already had the that bit, the ta da. Uh -huh. Oh, that sounds quite good. Right. And then, as you're saying, we sort of play each other the ideas. Don't yeah. Th then we'll get together. I mean, the, you know, and it, it, I, 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 I think it's fortunate that it works, isn't it? Yeah. Though? Because, um, you know, there are some some days, as you can imagine, there are two of you sitting in a room and absolutely nothing's happening. You know? Yeah. And uh, you think, well. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, maybe this is a terrible idea. <laughs> maybe it yeah. is, yeah. But um, it is it is quite a, 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 lot, a lot of hard work, and some days it just flies, and other days it doesn't. So yeah, yeah I think you've got to get on with the person or people that yeah. you're doing it with. Do just yeah. the two of you do most of it, or do yeah. you yes. I mean, yeah. a, I guess I mean it's, it's very simple. Really. I mean, I'm, I'm actually, uh, although I've, I hate to say it, I'm a bit of a fan of what Greg does. So in a way it's nice, he'll play he'll play his ideas and then I'll, and generally, it's not always, um, but I'll think, yeah, that, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can do something, you know, I know where that needs to go. Yeah. And then then, we'll, then we sort of bounce off each other and I'll say, well, how about we, we do this next? Or, or literally just take it away and stew on it for a while and then maybe come back and say, well, what if we did this next? And have you, have you thought about Actually, let's put this over a, a halftime groove rather than where you thought it was going to be. Yeah, mm. and then and then that that way, so you, you sort of you you sort of passing the baton between you, each other. You, yeah, whoever really has the the first chunk of idea sort of gives it to the other <laughs> to <laughs> say, all right, well, what we're we going to do with that. But we've been lucky. We've been fortunate because we've been together now for <coughs> a fair amount of time, and uh, it's it, it's worked and it's still working. So this is this is quite an exciting thing. This having having your own record yeah. it's just you know all the rest that goes with it yeah and the challenges of the, getting it out the challenges yeah. yeah i mean because america is has always been our biggest market it still to date is our biggest market mm -hmm. um to tackle that on your own is qu quite difficult yeah, yeah. Ha, tell me explain to the audience how different is the english music scene versus the u.s music scene <coughs> i think there's two, there's, two, there's two, essentially two things about uh, the English scene. Um, uh, one of the positives is is that it's always been very vibrant. Um, the ne the negative I is that they're they're too sort of fashion conscious, um, and that is a negative. It certainly, I mean, thinking back to when Alchemy were trying to get their deal, and I was in a different part of the world, never heard of Acoustic Alchemy doing different things. If you weren't doing what the the the, the trendy n mm -hmm. newspapers were saying you had to be doing, you'd simply couldn't get in the door. It didn't matter how good it was, and and we the the fashion thing in England, right through to clothes fashion, music fashion, art fashion, plays a, a, a huge role, and actually t sort of to the detriment, really. Yeah. I mean, they're they're very pleased that they can say they're fashion leaders. Yeah. But unfortunately, it means if you're not doing something fashionable, <laughs> you, you simply don't get a show. Stifles some creativity, Absolutely, probably. Yeah. Probably hides a lot of good talent, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But the U.S. is more open. Is that what you're saying? I, I think so. Yeah. And, but, and, and also there's that whole deal about, um, you know, the, the other sides of the Atlantic, because even though just as American bands who haven't been able to get arrested in America yeah. find a following in England, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. I mean... It's, it's always been so to some degree because yeah. there's just that a fresh a fresh yeah. approach from the other side. Well, that's, I think that's where technology has been good because yeah. it just means, like you just said, that the you know the people who don't get a look in now can yeah. get a look in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, a little bit short on time, but just out of curiosity, when you're away from the type of music you do, what do you guys listen to? Who do you like? Well, you know, if I'm going to be honest, 
I like I listen to a lot of talk radio. So <laughs> <laughs> a lot of talk radio. Okay. Yeah, I'm you know great fan of of the BBC. Uh, we have um, you know radio, we have Radio Five Live, which is a sort of mix because it's uh, a lot, 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 lot of yeah, yeah um, sport a, is uh -huh. sort of sport angle, um, but lots of interesting things. If I, or I listen to Radio Four. I mean, I like talk radio. Okay. I mean, I do listen to. Um, music radio but not, not, not as, as much. much but no. that's what you do every day what about you Miles? yeah no I'm like Greg I, <coughs> I often like to give my ears a rest because yeah. if you're doing music most understand. of the day and very often most of the night as well yeah. you just do, do want to give your ears a rest yeah. um, but if I'm listening to music um, I tend not to be adventurous in my old age I'd, I often just go back to the stuff I know I'm gonna love yeah. so I'll still go back and listen to Steely Dan and Jimi Hendrix um, George Benson, I mean, I mean, there's all the all the great guitars that everyone listens to. People yeah. like Larry Carlton and Robin Ford and um, uh, Scott Henderson. There's some killer players out yeah. there. Pat Metheny, we both mm, big Pat yeah. Metheny fans. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. interesting. New album is going to be out in the fall of 2011. You have a website. Folks are interested in yeah. taking a closer look. And what's yeah, what's that um, website? It's acoustic-alchemy.net. Okay. Right. And, and uh, there should be all the information about it there. Yeah. Okay, and, and and people can purchase the album. I'm assuming off of the website, probably. That may well be one of the avenues. As I say, we're still it's sort fishing. Of early we're still days, sort of yeah. it's still early days as far as that goes. But um, yeah, no, but it'll it, certainly say there where you can get yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It, you know, there'll be links and things. Gentlemen, it's been a real pleasure. Been hey, interesting. Really enjoyed it. Thank Wish you. you the best of luck as Thank you continue you, the yeah. tour of the U.S. Thanks okay. kindly, sir. Absolutely, <laughs> it's our Thanks. pleasure. Appreciate it. Best of luck to you. I want to mention that uh, Greg and Miles are playing the Pensacola Cultural Jazz Series. If you want to find out a little bit more about Acoustic Alchemy, you can check that uh, website out, PensacolaCulturalJazzSeries.com, and uh, no doubt we'll find some inf uh, interesting information on Acoustic Alchemy. Certainly hope you uh, enjoyed the broadcast. And by the way, talking about all this uh, high technology, Facebook is out there and we're on it. All you have to do is search out <laughs> Conversations with Jeff Weeks. And if you'd like to check out some of our past shows, you can do so, wsre.org slash conversations. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Jeff Weeks. Take very good care of yourself. We'll see you soon. Support for this program is provided in part by these corporate sponsors. And by viewers like you.